The yarns that I'm using for this project are Yarn B, Yarn Topia in Ivory, Sage, and this one, Heather. The uh, specs of the yarn are 100% acrylic. Um, number two, fine. I am using, they said, four and a, and a half millimeter hook. I'm using a four millimeter hook. Um, it's up to you what you want to use. And I started with um, two of each color. Uh, they weren't full. Uh, like these three were up brand new. The first three that I used were some used, some um, started because I had another project. So basically, if you are my size, I would say we're medium but i'm making a large size so i would say half at least well minimum half five um, of if you want to go with um, a solid color i would have minimum five um, having the sixth one is better i saved the receipt and you i think you have 90 days to return them uh, the extra one i always like to play it safe because you never know all right, if you are on a beginner side and still don't know how to really design clothes, pick a sweater that you like or a garment, whatever it is, and um, uh, get your chains, the base chain, whatever multiples are for the pattern, and make it as wide as your favorite garment, and then align it. And this will be something for you to base your design off and will give you some guidance until, you know, you learn how to um, kind of visualize and design your stuff. So the pattern calls for multiples of 13 plus 4 at the end. So here I have 30. The first row will be the base row. Actually, the first two rows will be base rows. So um, double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and one double crochet into each chain until the end of the row, like so. And there's first row complete. Turn, chain three counts as your first double crochet. And then I put one double crochet only into the front loop. I worked only the front loop. All the way until the end of the row into the last chain. Um, the last chain I worked both loops. And uh, this way we're going to have this nice line right here. And uh, just like on the... Now the fun starts. So the first row of the design, uh, chain three counts as a double crochet. Add four more double crochets for the total of five. And here you're working both loops oh, from here on. Three, four, five. This is your border. This is unchanged through the entire garment. Um, yarn over, skip two, five double crochets into the next. One, two, three, four, five. That's your shell. Skip two, one double crochet into the next eight stitches. Whatever is going to be in between this, the first and last shell, you will be putting eight double crochets in between. So we got five, six, seven, eight. Done the eight, skip two, five double crochets into the next. Skip two, 
and let's say eight double crochets um, one double crochet into the next eight here is the comparison with the uh, garment so I have five here five here and eight in between four and five turn the next row same thing for the border chain three uh, one double crochet into the next four chain two skip two single crochet into the next chain two skip two one double crochet into the next eight and when you come to this shell same thing chain two skip two single crochet into the next chain two skip two continue with the eight or um, if at the end of the row finish with the five and now when you turn so we will be repeating rows one and two of the design until um, you reach the uh, base of the neckline. So whether you're making a dress or a top, whatever you're making, this is the bottom up. So you've done these, just like in the base row, skip two, five double crochets into the next, or shell into the single crochet skip the chain two one double crochet into the next eight and here is the uh, top So, um, as you can see, the shells are turned with the right side towards us and with the wrong side, on the wrong side, obviously. That's why we needed two base rows, because um, if I would have started with this one, then I would have had all the shells turned with the wrong side towards me. And uh, I like to have the right side based on the base row. So the double crochets are facing with the right side towards me. That's why the second row. So if you want your base to be wider, you're going to have um, an even amount of rows um, and then work the shells. So uh, this is how it looks like. It's a very, very easy pattern. And I like that it's not too... Um, open work I can actually I don't need to wear a tank top underneath um, so it will be really nice so for the um, back I decided so I'm starting the same just like the front but I decided not to put in between um, any shells I decided that I will have five the shells and then here are the shells and the remaining five um, i don't need the design on my back panel if you need it or want it um, up to you i have the same number of stitches here but this one looks a little wider because um, there is no design but obviously when i block it i'll make sure that they uh, are even i think it's much easier the yarn used is exactly the same since we're skipping four here and working in one and then we're putting 
five double crochet so we're basically working the same stitches and i think the yarn usage should be the same so um, as you can see my front panel is uh, close to this one this uh, sweater is a little too close to my neck so um, i stopped a little uh, before the neckline um, then we will add the um, shoulder panels these are slanted obviously we can make that in crochet and sometimes the sleeves here um, are a little slanted but this channel is crocheting for beginners so we will stick to rectangles i'm not gonna you know go into details we're just gonna make them straight so um, for the back panel when you have the design here you see the row with the shells go ahead and add another row where you will have the chains so when you add the shoulder panels this is evened out so what i'm going to do is i will add two rows one here and backwards and then i will start here go uh, backwards so um uh, it builds the sh shoulder panel when you align it you want to decide how wide your shoulders will be or how wide your neck opening will be and you will have to count from either side inwards or if you know the number of the stitches middle and to the left for me it's easier from out inwards this one is a little too tight to my neck so i will probably want to finish maybe here yeah and i will count the number of these stitches put a stitch marker here and you'll count from this side inwards same exact number and put a stitch marker there okay so here we had uh, chain two single crochet chain two you will put one i mean yeah one double crochet in each of them so into the chain into the second chain into the single crochet and into the next chain and into the next chain you will still end up with the same five double crochets that you would put in a shell but this time you spread them so uh, for my uh, shoulder panels i counted starting from this one inwards i need 23 so that's what i will do i will add 23 double crochets so uh, once you're done with your weed um, you will turn and technically you can add as many rows back and forth as deep you want your back panel to sit but um I don't know for a regular garment i would probably not go more than two maybe for larger sizes like 2xl 3xl maybe three but not more than that so the usual chain three counts as the first double crochet and you will put one double crochet all the way till the end it's pretty simple and finishing up here don't forget the last double crochet into the third chain from the beginning of the previous row well and since i already had the yarn cut uh, i like to leave a tail that is about <clears throat> two times of the length or width whatever i'm working it so i can use this to sew uh, both panels together so now i'm going to turn this so this row face is facing me i found the 23rd stitch and we'll join with the slip knot leave longer tails easier to sew them in hide them and don't be stingy you'll regret it um go through and pull add two more chains that will count as a double crochet and the same thing here you will put one double crochet in each stitch all the way till the end and 
same like um, on the other side we will work double crochets into the chains and the single crochet turn at the second row chain three will count as a double crochet and one double crochet to the next and into each until the end of this mini row and this is the right side of the back panel so this row and this row are facing me and these ones are the other way now let's put the front panel next to this one now your front panel has to have the exact same same number of rows like the back panel and since we stopped here our um, shoulder panels will have to be this full length um, we will not go full rows back and forth this will be uh, the ones that we will one two three four five six seven are mine so i will have to work seven for this shoulder panel so the next one uh, is chain three in the, this row we will we'll be putting chain two single crochet chain two but we will have to have the same 23 um like in the other on this panel the width of the shoulder panel so chain two skip to single crochet chain two skip two from here i will put the two only 23 one two eight now keep in mind we are counting nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen Didn't I finish on a good one? <laughs> 21, 22, 23. Well, and this is going to be the 24th. Yeah, it would have helped if I would have um, started building the shoulder panels from the front panel, not the back panel. So what would be wiser for us to put double crochets here? We can still put the designs in these for the next... Uh, however many rows and just have the, the last two um, so it looks neater this one is just gonna have to be double crochets uh, we can i don't think it's gonna look good to have a half a shell yeah so double crochet here you know what we can skip one of the chains and work another chain another double crochet here and I think our problem got solved uh, having 23. Well, my problem. You probably uh, are going to watch this video and take this in consideration and uh, not make the mistake. But if you made the mistake, just like me, well, it was an easy fix. We skipped one of the chains and we should be ending with 23 double crochets. So you will follow the pattern since I have to work... Uh, the design i will just keep doing what i see here and i will stop probably two rows from the end yeah 
till the end. All right. So since we are lowering as we're going, uh, okay. So I made four, right? Uh, I need seven. So if I do the fifth one with a shell, then the sixth one will be uh, with chains and single crochet, and the seventh one will be plain. And I don't think it's enough sturdiness. So if you are doing also seven rows like me, I will have to, starting this one, fifth, six, seven, they will have to be plain double crochets um, with no gapping. So it's a little more sturdier since uh, the entire garment is basically uh, hanging off the shoulders. And... Uh, I mean, you already know how you do, but let me show you. Like so. And I already not, I'm not gonna come back. I'll just add the three rows and uh, then I'll come back when we will be starting the other side. And I will repeat the same what I did here, although I could chain one, tighten it and put a single crochet in it. Technically, I could just chain one instead of I like I chained here too, but since I have a hole here, this hole has to match the, that one. We're gonna chain two, skip the two, and one double crochet till the end. Um, so we will follow uh, this one in the in the opposite direction, pretty much follow the uh, pattern. And uh, chain two into the middle, chain two till the end. So go till the end and right here, I'll meet you here when you turn and come back. So here is the double crochet. Then um, we skip the chain, put a double crochet into the other chain and a double crochet into the single crochet. This way, these two match totally and completely. So um, I'm not going to repeat myself and annoy you. I'll just follow these steps and finish this side. And we got the um, shoulder panels completed. Now turn the uh, panels with the wrong side to face you and uh, align them. So this is the front and this is the back. like so and uh, we will sew them and like I mentioned in one of the clips we'll use this tail to move to the right and this tail to move to the left darning needle so we ended up with the double crochets facing us so the wrong ones will be facing uh, our will be uh, on our shoulders uh, it's okay we'll figure something out so use the both loops of this chain three and go one more time use both loops on both sides from this one on you will want to let me move to the middle of the screen you will want to grab this loop and the inner one and on this
this one you want to get this V in the next loop. So go around, grab this loop through the middle of the V and then the middle with the this one. Now let's do a few so um, you will see what I mean. Again, these two and these two and there we go. Again, I will tie these mm, temporarily. Once I finish the entire project, I will be working these in. So this is the wrong side and uh, this is how it will look on the right side. I think once it's steamed, ironed, blocked, it will look flat and it will look good. So do the same on the other shoulder. All right, so turn the garment with the right side towards you and with the back panel towards you. You choose where you want to start the seam. Uh, sometimes people leave the seam here on the side, on the left side. Sometimes they um, do it in the back. I feel like I want to do it in the back. Uh, so it's connected here. Mm, find the middle and uh, join. I'll just eye it. So the base round will be... Um, let's do single crochets. Yes, so uh, I will do simple single crochets all the way around. I will not decrease anything, just this, nothing else. There's this one and here is the corner. So I will move here and I will put two single crochets into the um, around the leg of the double crochets and this is the single crochet here we'll put a single crochet in it and move to the front panel and here same one single crochet in each stitch and so the last stitch now slip stitch into the first from um, here one you will chain one two three four five so basically you can chain as long as wide you want your collar to be um one two three four five i think that's enough yeah for me i don't want it too wide anyway now the the most annoying but the most interesting part will start so uh, slip stitch into the second from the hook and then slip stitch into each one so two three four yeah i think it's enough slip stitch into the back loop of the single crochet and then slip stitch into the back loop of the next single crochet yeah now flip it not it flip the work and you will be slip stitching into the back loop only on this side so there are one two three four one two three four so you will go into the fourth into the back loop 
that's why i said it's it's gonna be annoying it's um tedious if you have a different way of creating edges or cuffs sleeve cuffs or you know you do whatever you like i think this one this slip stitching thing looks much neater and much nicer and into the last like so chain one and again turn so now slip stitch into the back loop of the fourth one to the back loop two three four so we use this one slip stitch into the next single crochet and slip stitch into the next single crochet into the back loop only oh this looks this four chains looks small i don't know i'll make a couple of rows and um, i'll see how i like so we turn again and again into the back loops one two three four so you find that one One, two, three, and four. My stitches look like they're drunken. <laughs> Chain one and turn, and again to the back loop. Good thing is when you block or uh, garments, the stitches are kind of um, evening out. Even if these ones are not perfectly equal, identical, I think as uh, the garment dries, they will kind of get settled. So this is the fourth one, and we're going into the back loop of the next single crochet the back loop of the next single crochet and turn so this is how it would look like and um, as you can see it kind of gathers towards the end so uh, your neckline will actually be gathered inwards and um, so this is the right side this is the wrong side it looks equal and because you're working into the back loops only you get this really nice line uh, to show where the uh, neckline is okay so this is where we are and um i went ahead and worked on those sleeves so you guys have an idea what we are going to be working on um i decided to add the design on the side of the sleeve just like we have here um so once you've completed uh, the um, neckline fold it with the Oh, it doesn't matter with the wrong side or with the right. What I do, I put it on and then I mark where I would like my, um, how deep I would like my sleeves to be. So this is where I ended. And uh, then I fold the garment with the wrong side out. And um, I saw the sides remember when we were changing the colors i told you to not be stingy <laughs> leave long tails so these are the tails that um, i'm using to sew the colors uh, so if we will use from this side and this tail from this side and i'll show you um i'll use halfway here halfway here just like we used for the shoulders and this way your garment doesn't have a different color strand or a different color yarn picking you know on the sides so i wanted my sleeve to be a normal width um, nothing balloony or big so uh, you will have to decide how wide your sleeve is going to be but um, 
regardless of the width you will be starting pretty much the same and we will be working in circles in rounds um and uh, yes you will have the seam this is the seam it's not ugly i don't think uh, i um, on some projects i uh, like to put you know to work a rectangle and then sew it sew it here sew it here uh this time i just don't feel like sewing so we will try to avoid sewing as much as possible and i uh, like the first round let me see how i did here yes the first round to face outwards um the right side to be facing out chain two and that's your double crochet let me see how i did here all right so for my normal width um i'm alternating two double crochets around the leg of this row one double crochet around next then again two double crochets around this one one to the next and again two around this one one around that and all the way up to the shoulder seam and once you get to the seam I will not put one double crochet here. What I'm going to do is put five double crochets or a fan into the seam. Um, so one, two, and you're skipping this row. If you can work straight into the seam, that's fine. Um, let me see if I can try. I mean, technically we sewed both together maybe a little dive a little deeper here and um, find a spot where to put the um, five uh, double crochet fan two three four and five and kind of hide this one and then uh, you will should be working with a mirror um, like reflection from here on so when you skip this one we had two here so you will skip the next row and we'll start working the other way two one two one two one so two in this one in this and uh, this way whatever is on your shoulder this will look um, even and symmetrical and go all the way to the um, armpit and as we are approaching the end of the round so this ends up being the last one um, so two here two here I will just try to insert one double crochet into the actual seam and uh, where you put it it really doesn't matter it's going to be right in your armpit and nobody's gonna look in there so uh, now slip stitch into the third chain from the beginning and that is our full round now we will flip the work and we will be working from this side chain three double crochet into the next and one double crochet in each stitch until you reach up here the shoulder panel one double crochet into the two right here so now we will carry one with the pattern um, chain two skip two single crochet into the next into the middle of the shell chain two skip two one double crochet into the next and we will continue till the end of the round down here and the same we'll slip stitch into the third chain from the beginning turn 
or put the work and the same chain three double crochet into the next and you can already see the seam is forming straight all right and we will again carry it on until we reach the shoulder panel uh, with the exception that all right let me turn it this way uh, so now we will build three this one was one and now we're gonna do three let me show you how. let's count how we want to put them uh, let's say we want three or i want it three double crochets in the in between my fans you can do however many you want so one two three then we will skip two so the next shell has to be here and then we're skipping two again so i need to put one two three four more double crochets uh, that is if you want to have three uh, double crochets in between i think this is the fourth one yeah so skip two we'll put a fan here or a shell two three four five now skip two one two three in between and here again we're skipping two and putting a shell on top of this one so now we know this is right in the middle and everything is aligned four skip two one two three and um use um, stitch markers uh, if you you know um, struggle to kind of visualize the things um and it will help you you know how um, we have a saying in russian measure seven times cut once um it rather measure a few times instead of you know well you can crochet and undo as many times as you want really uh, but it helps when you take the time to measure all right skip two put five here and skip two the rest are double crochets and once you created this base after this you don't have to count um, the pattern will be showing you um, so you go to the end complete it turn around and come back and when you come back we'll stop right here and here we are so um, this will be just like the uh, design on the short right here so you got to the fan chain two skip two single crochet chain two skip two one double crochet in the next three or however uh, many you decided to have in between i thought three were enough um, so it actually is nice on the side uh, and more it will probably be spread um, wider or you can do the entire sleeve you know um, just with fans play with it chain two um so these are just, you know, ideas that I give you. You guys can modify however you want. Um, you don't have to do exactly what I do, but you can always add, you know, something yours. Like so. And now when you're gonna go around and come around it's exactly the same you know like here so uh this is the finished sleeve uh, i decided to go since my stripes were 10 rows long i decided to add 
uh, 10 of each. And uh, I didn't do a full sleeve because I catch myself always you know, pushing my sleeves and wear them here. So um, this is just gonna be how it's gonna be um, three quarters of a sleeve. And uh, if you have enough yarn, you can make the cuff different. Um, I don't, I would prefer to make it purple, you know, just to uh, match everything purple here, purple at the bottom, purple started, pur but this is all I have left and it's not enough. So I decided to continue with the same color. Um, I didn't want to put beige, um, not for the sleeves, because they're constantly handled, and um, I don't know. I know I'm not going to wear a dirty sweater, but it shows on beige a little, uh, a little faster than it would have shown on green or purple. But um, it's up to you. So once you're done with the um, length of your sleeve, uh, we'll come back and um, I will show you how to do the uh, cuff, but it, it basically will be exactly like the um, the neckline. It's same exact um, principle. I only, I chained 16, um, so I have 15 here, uh, but it's the same. I come back and I uh, slip stitch two and I turn around and do so. Um, you can slip stitch three to bring it, uh, better like make it smaller uh, but I slip stitch two and um, that's how it's going to be so yeah the the same like here I don't even know if I need to film um, because uh, and I am uh, also working in the back loops as well so I can have this nice line like we had the have the line right here <laughs> 